Welcome to Talking Roadmaps, the channel where we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything about roadmapping. Today, I'm joined by Vidas. Vidas, introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. I'm Vidas from Teamhood. Uh, I'm I'm working myself as a product manager for our beloved software, both as as like a person responsible for this area, as well as someone who needs to be as close as possible to the end users to understand what kind of pain points and sufferings they endure throughout the day so we can make the software far more better than it is. I mean, and I think you kind of play yourself down a little bit. That You're also the CEO of Team Hood. So that mini CEO is a uh, very apt description, I guess, for yourself. I, I actually, usually, yeah, I try to avoid it. You caught me here right away. <laughs> I try to avoid that title because um, I treat myself as a creator. I love creating things. I love, you know, making making things work for people. And for me, this is the best title ever to, to do something meaningful, valuable. CEO is, is a role which I take and uh, I also enjoy, but in general, it just tells not much uh, as I feel. Uh, it just doesn't tell the full picture. But yeah, I'm, I'm responsible for the company. So that's a hell of a lot of uh, scope, you know, to take care of. And if yeah, you enjoy the channel, I mean, subscribe. wearing multiple hats, that. that's, uh, that's a, like. a life of every CEO, I believe. So let's dive in, and I'm sure we're going to hear more about Team Hood as we go along, as kind of, I'm sure you'll reference it in, in some of your answers. What is the purpose of a roadmap? Yeah, so straight to, the, straight to the point, right, Phil? For me, personally, as well as my team, um, it's like a guide, guidance and agreement, uh, alignment between everyone, so that we know what do we envision uh, to be like uh, future go future goals or ways to achieve our future goals so so that that's a simple explanation but in terms of tangible things that's just a, you know a list of specific data which represents s steps actions to take uh, on specific dates maybe even um, so that we we fulfill uh, what we envision during our strategy planning or or vision statement even sessions. So yeah. Okay, so maybe you unpack that a little bit more for me. So you talked about specific actions, specific items, maybe with the date. Can, can you maybe unpack that? Tell me a little more, bit more about what you're thinking there. Well, so roadmap is is like a twofold thing uh, as I see it. Mainly, it's like so there is a structure. And there is content in each roadmap. So structure is somewhat like how do you visualize things so that people understand it and perceive it the same way. You want to have that alignment. You want to have that simplicity and you want to have that like single glance to learn everything approach. That's a good roadmap for me, but that's structure mainly, how you visualize. And the, the content itself steps, items, initiatives, mini projects, whatever you have in there. These are things that tell you how or what exactly will you do to reach the goals, which are like maybe milestones in your roadmap. Maybe they're like huge initiatives if you're working like an enterprise um, level company. But in general, that's what I would call content. What do we want and how we will get there? So, okay, yeah, what we want and how we'll get there now. So, okay, you used a few terms there of initiatives, steps. I re I'm sure there was another one in there. Mini project. Well, I don't differentiate too much between these terms because it's already confusing to everyone. There, there are just too many terms. I'm so relaxed about calling things different names. Maybe that's my vice, right? I feel that it doesn't matter like how you call things you do, because if you have a clear goal or vision where you want to end up like eventually, and you will figure out what are the steps to get to that vision, you can call them, you know, maybe they will be tasks, those items, because they're just small things that you will do day by day. And eventually you appear in your destination, or maybe you will need to start these like groundbreaking initiatives, which will transform both your organization or your product or your service, and then you get to the final destination. Or maybe there is no final destination. You keep doing stuff until until you reach the ideal point of uh, no return. But general, these, these things are dependent really on the case we're speaking. Small team, probably tasks or steps. Bigger teams or organizations, projects, initiatives, programs, well, 
a lot of different names. There are uses of them, of course, but I'm relaxed about it. And you hinted at there using a roadmap for more than just steering a product. Maybe you could say, unpack that thought a little more. Well, already in that st steering the product, it has a lot of underneath, right? What is steering? Is it like technical steering? What needs to be done uh, or how it needs to be done? Or it's like organizing people's work around the vision. So do people perceive everything this, the same way as I do or, or as my other teammates do? And it involves a lot of things. I, as a team member, I like to know what's what's the long-term goal because it can influence my decisions and I can spark additional ideas, sprinkle on top of everything we do. So, so this is like this soft value that lives underneath the roadmap. And people, of course, do expect that. Probably then what I meant by structure and alignment is also when we get into tough situations and... It's always, you know, a roller coaster, especially I'm, I'm coming from the startup uh, world. It's always a roller coaster. You, you're just trying to solve the most important problems. There are just too many of them uh, all the time. And in this case, it's about not forgetting <laughs> or it's about like feeling the commitment. If it's always somewhere, if, if you if, if you even visualize and make your roadmap public, if you involve your users or customers in there, I mean, that's it. That's your commitment. It, there is like you you need to live to live up to your commitments and that's that will push you to stay on track instead of dwell into every you know shiny object that you see along the way so so this is this is very important and it comes as a this also soft value of of roadmap not just as a a plan of things on on the calendar basis that kind of helping keep people on some sort of track not following every rabbit hole or rat hole or bright shiny object I, I like that that thought and you you kind of talked a bit about it being a kind of that alignment of the vision maybe you could kind of say a little bit more give some more thoughts around kind of vision strategy objectives how they all link into a roadmap yeah and i i believe the best way is to like even share some examples of my own is especially when it comes to like so if it's a bigger organization and i've been in in my past career in in very large organizations thousands up to from five to ten thousand people it's i felt like how complicated it is to keep grand visions which are great when when you when you think about the vision you, you have so much knowledge behind you that you craft this vision not by just you know flipping your fingers but just by working together with a lot of people and crafting something that will steer a large organization towards a success but then how fast it gets lost when you move across layers, layers to other bottom layers of, I don't know if it's hierarchical structure or it's just flat, but really, really, you know, broad structure of organization. It just gets lost somewhere in the trenches. And having good roadmap, I think for me, it means if we agreed, for example, th this year, so we agreed, okay, we need to be far better at the first session of our product. So everyone who comes to team, they need to be uh, met with the best effort of user experience with straight and fluent you know, use cases or user journeys. And we need to work on that. We will measure it. And this is our like goal for the first quarter. Then we iterate in another quarter and we keep doing that until end of the year. So this needs to live in roadmap also as a goal. If I structure my roadmap, I will not just I won't just place items like oh we need to improve like onboarding we need to make application load faster we need to ensure that our application is responsive enough on majority of the devices that's not good enough I need to package them under under something like a key result and that key result could be oh, let's activate 20% more of users on the first session. That's the key result that they won't achieve by the end of the of the year. Maybe 30% if we're like more ambitious. That's what we can write. And then items need to fall under this initiative or key result. And each item can be a standalone delivery of value because if item is on roadmap, I want to see how how much tangible it is to the end goal. How can I look at it and understand that, yes, 
this is what's going to move the needle. This is very important. And I heard the word activate in there. That sounds like you're applying almost a pirate metrics style kind of funnel to, to kind of your customer journey. It, it's like, it's a mix of things. I, I wouldn't even call it any specific method or, or, or approach, but we just do a mix of things. And it's about do what's right because every organization at specific point in time has specific needs. I cannot go to every startup and say, oh, you should do your road mapping this way because, well, maybe they're in different types of, they're solving different type of problems than we do. And they will need to structure the roadmap differently. And they will need, you know, in, to involve maybe stakeholders, which are not inside the team, just outside, completely driven by outside stakeholders. And that's it. That's different. Maybe they don't have data or they need to have data. And that's their dri drive, you know, to make roadmaps more tangible. So we talked a lot about, what, or quite a bit about what's on the roadmap. We've talked about kind of that alignment of strategy and objectives and kind of key results. But who's looking at this thing? Who Who is the audience of our roadmap? Well, again, it really depends what in what type of organization and what type of business you are. I think personally, if, if it's if it's a startup, the audience can be quite broad, <clears throat> first of all. And most importantly, it's your users, because if you're building something, if you're in early stages, it is extremely important to put forward looking vision and build the trust that the thing people use right now will change over time, maybe change at amazing speeds. This is what you know startups are good at, changing rapidly. And people need to see what's happening. They're not just purchasing a service which is static right now. I'm buying what I need right now. Of course, I as a company also expect maybe I'm purchasing like Teamhood is a project management tool based on Kanban. That's like unique approach to Kanban, uh, which is flow up visualization. It's also very close to the road mapping, by the way. But in general, you can visualize many things and people say, okay, so we start with team task management, but in one year we plan to triple our team size and we will involve project managers. We will need some sort of alignment uh, tracks to just ensure that we build the right thing. And they will need additional services or products on top. So if they see a well-crafted roadmap that fulfills that need and the company is focused on not the static approach to what user needs, but also what will user need in one or two years, they will build that into the roadmap. So people gain trust. And then comes the rest, of course. Team alignment, which we already spoke about. Everyone inside the organization, if it's product-driven, if it's product-led as it's convenient to call nowadays, people, everyone should be aware of roadmap in the, in the company. That's just, it's just your life. It's just your culture. You're product centric. But who's, who's maintaining it or who owns this artifact then? If they're talking to all these different stakeholder groups, they're helping align everyone. Who, who's the owner? I, well, in my case, it's me. Uh, it's easy an answer. <laughs> I, 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 I am entitled to own such an awesome thing because for me, it is awesome. I, I love thinking about the future and crafting um, new br brilliant or not so brilliant ideas and helping people. In every organization, I do hope there is a defined responsibility or even a role. Call it product manager, call it product owner, call it initiative owner, program manager, somebody who has this, you know, entitlement of decision power to influence the roadmap, because it's still somebody needs to be a single person thinking and collecting. It can be collective, but then still somebody needs to facilitate that uh, co community driven approach. So, so there needs to be at least one person. Ideally, it's it's single person because responsibility lives best on on one head. If it's spread across different people, nobody's responsible, as we know. Uh, so, so yeah, it's hopefully it's a former role uh, or it's just a hat, but it needs to be worn every day. I would say people will have questions like, "Oh, should we do this?" and then somebody needs to get that answer. Why do we do it? Is is it okay to do it? Should we do it because it's on our roadmap, or should is it another shiny object? What what's uh, what's the right you know decision making process? Uh, it actually hinted at a really interesting question for me there. 
At what point do you think you'll hand that ownership over to someone else as your organization scales? Eventually, I do understand that I will need to hand it at our current scale and probably looking up front. I don't think it will come that fast because few things. Until we make our market fulfilled or we have enough of uh, success across the board, we will keep iterating on what we already have, meaning that it's not about spreading the product thin on various areas. It's about making product great in specific area that you focus on. This is important. And that doesn't require multiple people organizing the roadmap or product vision or anything around, you know, stakeholders who influence the product. But once we say, okay, we need to address different needs, we need to address additional market use cases, or we need to even have a second product, that's when it becomes interesting and also um, tough, meaning we will have more people responsible inside the product engineering, inside the product management part, and we will need additional, you know, facilitator or alignment uh, helper person. So that, that could be someone, uh, where I say, okay, that's enough. It, it's your hat, <laughs> not mine anymore. But for me, it will be hard. I, I, I love creating products. I love uh, solving problems and this is a uh, best job, best job ever. I mean, and if you're a product person as a leader, I, I can understand that. The, the time I usually find people think that it's the time to hand over is when they're so busy with the funding elements that they're neglecting the product elements. Absolutely. It's just, for me, maybe I have at least temporary solution. I say, well, the best investors, our end users, if we convince them, get the, the best deal ever and, and everyone wins in that terms. So I'm, I'm we're choosing the bootstrap path. It's just, you know, more organic, more product centric. It's it's it falls under product led, you know, strategy. So it, it, it's about what you love doing, right? Uh, I do love talking about funding and finances, but uh, product work is far far more uh, rewarding. I, yeah, there's a book called Product Mindset, and one of the principles I remember in there talks about it should be self funding from day one for a product. If it's not, then it's not really a product. It can be both, I think. It can be the, the what it it's meant in that book saying that if it's not able to sell fund, that's a problem already from day zero and you need to check your go-to-market, et cetera, whatever falls under that. But as we see in, in, in our nowadays world, there are certain areas where you need to, you know, commit heavy up front, look at the whole, you know, artificial intelligence trend and craziness. I mean, resources committed up front, they were insane. But the spark of, Payback is also insane if you track the metrics on day zero and first year of like chat GPT or similar services. So it depends, right? As, as in every case. We've talked about the vision, the strategy, the objectives, feeding kind of into it and creating that context and that shape. What else flows out of our roadmap? What, what other kind of artifacts or things link into it that we need to kind of consider the relationship to? It depends on the structure a bit. Um, what 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 do you want to visualize in there? And this structure can deliver you understanding of order of things, understanding of priorities. Because again, if you make roadmap not like single horizontal axis driven, where you just place a lot of colored bars and you say that that's my roadmap, um, and things just fall in the line. Yeah, so you have calendar order sorted, you have calendar schedule sorted. But in reality, as we know, things tend to take sometimes longer than we envisioned. Deadlines come faster than we expected. And we end up in doing more things than we should have done before. And and this is an artifact. If you see that you're already working on too many things at the same time, and me coming from Kanban ideology... It's already a huge signal because it's, first of all, not efficient what you're doing. It's just a, a, too many distractions can result in shipping everything later than you would do if you ship one thing uh, after another in, in a specific order or just, you know, in specific sequence of things. A good roadmap must tell priorities, I think, because roadmap structure needs to have an access telling you that, if you get into trouble or you need another decision, 
just check on your priorities. They 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 must be somewhere visualized. I don't know stickers, extra color coding, vertical axis to just say something's on top more important than something's at the bottom. And um, yeah, that's that, that's like not a side effect even. It, it's it's a core effect. A good roadmap should deliver. Sure, and I love that idea of showing the prioritization. I, sometimes I show risk on there as a, as an axis as well, or grouping. You talked about under a KR of a. Uh, the, you might call that a theme or something like that, where you group things together that are all driving towards the same group or the same uh, outcome. What other things are we putting on our roadmap? You know, if, if let's get really concrete. What what are the boxes, lines, etc. on here? I think we we tackled it a bit already. It's like for me, it it is something that moves a needle, tangible tangible thing, which I, as a reader of roadmap, I can identify what it is and which what kind of value will it bring it for me it cannot be something like oh we we're gonna i don't know upgrade our servers or we gonna use new technology somewhere that's not an item for roadmap because it doesn't tell the full picture why we are doing it what value will it bring so this Items, bars, whatever we 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 visualize them on on the piece of of uh, of paper, we can say these these are you know pieces of value. And sometimes I do see examples of roadmaps where the, the items are clearly driven by more. I am, by the way, also a technical person, but I see also roadmaps which are driven by technical people. And these roadmaps they resemble more of a like inside looking view. Anybody else won't get a clear picture. What the hell is going on? What what do we will what we will do? Why we will do it? Questions won't be answered. It's just a list of things, like a checklist. What do we need to do at what time? So so this is an example of what's not a great roadmap. And it's my personal opinion, but I I think if you do one, you need to involve different stakeholders, and you cannot just do it that way. You you need to be quite clear about why you're doing such things. Now it sounds like so it sounds like you're. <clears throat> you you likened there you didn't use the word but you essentially you likened a roadmap in that context of the bad ones to a almost like a classic waterfall style project plan now as someone coming from the kanban world how does that kind of long term view how does that fit with that short term adaptability of a kanban based methodology what are your thoughts it's 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 funny where we got with this question i just recorded like two hours ago a video talking about uh, why the discussion between Kanban versus Gantt or this agile, more agile approach uh, versus classical project management. Because for me personally, I, I don't like this topic uh, where, where people end up because usually it's either one or the other. This is like wrong wrong way to do things. Again, it depends. And what I was speaking in that video is like, you should clearly see what you need at a specific life cycle moment or time of your decision making. If you're just crafting something from bringing your idea or vision to something more tangible and you, that can be used for people alignment or communication, this is where you will use tools which have timelines, calendars, some sort of, you know, visualization. What's the order? What's the flow? And and when should we expect certain things to be done? The, and Gantt is great at that. I mean, it was it was created for, you know, project planning. So it's 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 still a good tool, right, for this case. But once you get into the trenches and start working, you might not use it that often because it doesn't give you the right data visualization. Again, it's about visualizing stuff. So Gantt visualizes data, which is for planning. So you can answer multiple questions. What's the order? What should be done? When it should be done? Maybe who will do it? And what's the overall progress? That's good on Gantt side. In Kanban, Kanban is all about the flow. It visualizes your workflow. It visualizes your actual work. And by having things in Kanban, you can discover what it is, you know, bottlenecking your process, where you need to improve because things start piling up. Usually they pile up because the next step is not efficient enough. Somebody's not pulling enough work. 
or something is wrong with the input. Maybe you're producing too much input. So what's the point if your flow is not that efficient? And Kanban is great at day-to-day -day, you know, operations. If I were to work on daily basis, I would go with Kanban. If I need to do my you know, monthly progress update and I want to check what's up, are, are we still on track? I would go to Gantt. So it depends what I'm doing. Am I planning or am I, you know, daily working really intensive? I'm in deep intensive work and it's on the daily basis. So it's actually both need to be combined. If you want to be very, you know, good at your decisions as well as at your actions. This is why I think you cannot just, you know, split these ideologies and say they are like mutually exclusive. Nope. I don't think that's right. And maybe that's what Mr. Gantt was missing when he first brought it in, because from what I hear, it, the Gantt chart was invented when he was working on the Hoover Dam, which was delivered late. But that kind of understanding of the flow and the bottlenecks was probably not there. Um, interestingly, I'm also someone who's famous for saying waterfall is not evil in the right context. In the same way, I, it depends what I'm developing, what I'm working on. There are certain things where it works wonderfully well. Choose the right tool for the right situation. If, if you need, you know, if, if you need to throw ideas on paper and you just, it's for you if you want to learn, if I were to do it, how would, how would I do it? How, what would be the order of things? What could be the potential time frame? But it's for learning purposes. It's not for giving it to somebody and saying, this is my signature. It's carved in stone. We will do it by the day X and let's go, you know, and then you try to do it. Sometimes, you know, people, you know, move deadlines uh, earlier just because client can pay more money for that. That's the wrong way of it's a, it's a good tool used in wrong circumstances. And you have result, <laughs> which is negative, and everybody bashes the tool. Nobody bashes bad decisions, or at least at the first point. Ah, we used the wrong tool. Nope, not a problem. Now, you talked about structure earlier, and that kind of been how you visualize the roadmap. We've talked a few about a few examples there of a Kanban and a, a Gantt chart. Are there any other sort of styles of visualization that you're a fan of, in particular on a roadmap? For me, roadmap contains uh, – roadmap represents – vision which is broken down into specific milestones or key results and we say if we do these things usually there are not more than three of them because having too many things too many focuses is also bad one is already a great option to start with and uh, if you have a larger team or larger organization yeah maybe you can do two three four some some number of them but rule of thumb less is more and then this Key, key results, they, they need to be clear, well described. Maybe you need to think about how do you describe them. That's also important. People don't think about copywriting when they write stuff, but it is important. It's a skill. So you, you should be good at it because everyone else will be reading and it's very easy. When you write small, short, you want to be concise. You cannot write like A4 sized papers in the, your roadmap. So when you are concise, it's very easy to miscommunicate something and, and give, you know, uh, mismatches with somebody's expectations so for me that that's that's important and if i see if, if i know what is the vision i see what are the clear you know milestones to fulfill that vision and in each of those milestones i see clearly tangible work items which i understand why they will move the needle to the key result that's the greatest you know roadmap for me personally and and if i can share with users that's already ideal because I know that my users will understand what we just thought in here. If it's only my language and vocabulary used in that roadmap, people will miscommunicate or misunderstand what's written and they will not care about it. So, totally true. I mean, I, I tend to think of it, that visualization is a storytelling tool. Therefore, the, those words and the copywriting angle. Is so important. I, I'm, totally, I'm totally with you on this one. There are many ways to visualize. And as I've said, each organization needs to, you know, choose the the right one. If you are a product organization, you have cadence to do things your way. If you're a service organization where you deliver service, it's still projects. Maybe the end, maybe the end result of the project is a product. But if you do multiple projects at the same time, you will be visualizing like projects and their milestones because each one maybe is for a different customer. So each customer will get a dedicated roadmap 
where things fall fall in. And maybe it's a gun chart, maybe it's just a PowerPoint with you know certain listed items and deadlines. But still, you know, it, it, it depends and it works differently uh, based on what people need. So let's get a little bit more abstract now. Um, Vidas, what do you consider to be best practice in road mapping? Wow, that's, this one is very hard because it's the best, right? The, the single sole thing <laughs> in road mapping. I think, and when you try to answer what's the best, so I think it's best to answer with the first thing that comes to your mind because it's so important maybe and it's so often used that it, it can be the best. I'm not saying it is the best. For me, it is um, about sticking to the vision, sticking to the end goal. That's that's really important. And the rest of the things are techniques and uh, separate you know, pieces of the puzzle. But if you stick to the vision, you, you somehow you develop that approach to continue tang- you know, keeping it tangible from high level things to lower level things, um, it, it can work magic. Let's take the other side of that then. What are the biggest mistakes you see people making? Oh, I have a really good pool of mistakes here. Um, personal. <laughs> oh, I, I, I also so like uh, looking back and doing too many things at the same time would be my number one. And it's it's the result. Uh, it's it's somewhat like a side effect from various bad practices. And there are many um, bad practices or, or, or even cognitive biases coming from, you know, psychology that gets you in this side effect. Maybe one example would be, you know, shiny objects. When we try to, you know, add stuff, we've been working to something and say, oh, oh man, this is great. We should do it. Let's just do it. We're a startup. We should go at it. We can do it fast. And then you have five things at the same time, all of them late, none of them at quality you expected. Um, so, so this is a really sad story. Then I think roadmaps that are too long, too forward looking. You can have that if, it, if, it's, if it's like research, maybe a good example is, yeah, we need to get to Mars by 2040. So we need to research delivery vehicle we need to research you know sustainable environment for humans we need to research how do we make fuel so this research is so grand that you need to have a forward vision that long but it will consist of various complicated pieces um, until you get there usually in technical world or non-technical it doesn't matter actually sometimes i see roadmaps being created for multiple years ahead and we already know that for instance, in large organizations, there will be a change in management or there will be change in, you know, some sort of regulations. You will just throw away that roadmap. Like the, the day something materializes, you will take that paper or software through the window and it's gone. So investing to upfront and in startup world, I cannot emphasize how important is that. You should look further. further. You should have a grand vision and end goal but you cannot create detailed things or too detailed things years ahead because it's going to change so fast and so many times that you won't you won't be able to you know get enough value from it and there are many more there are hundreds of mistakes but th- these are these are really costly ones we've all made so many i'm sure and that that's fundamentally how humans learn right we make mistakes we uh and hopefully learn from them we, we need just to be we, we need to be fearless in this case making mistakes is fine i mean it's just it, the, the whole art of doing business is just picking the right problems to solve and doing the right mistakes or minimizing the amount of wrong mistakes that that's the art <laughs> everyone will do it anyway um maybe the last thing to add about these mistakes is i don't want to be too strict on saying long vision, short vision, and keep focus, don't lose focus. Sometimes circumstances, again, it depends, can bring you to the point where you can say, no, this vision or this key result that we expected to move our vision is not working out. It's not going to work. We have all the evidence or we have enough enough of evidence that is going to hurt us in the end. So, Having blind commitment is also bad. But how do you balance between, you know, sticking with this stuff and not being blindly committed? That's, that's again, art. 
and everyone needs to be, you know, looking at their own environment and context to make a, the right decision. For me, it's it, for me, it's so hard. Every day can be hard on this decision. So we've heard a bunch of your advice so far. Whose advice do you listen to? I couldn't name one single person who would be the solo advisor. It's a bunch of different things. I like I like reading about uh, ways of working. And there, there is a great book by Dominica de Grandis, Make Work Visual. I love that because it's about Kanban. It, it is about maybe smaller scale stuff, but I mean, it's applicable and it's scalable to grand things like visions and, and you know, project programs even. If it's about people who, who I discuss with or talk, there are great communities about uh, products, Slack, Discord, maybe even LinkedIn group. I, I think I saw one on this with the same title about products, just product people. Uh, I think, so how did we meet is like this guy, Martin. So I loved his approach uh, about goals. He speaks about sprint goals, but in general, that's the same. Roadmap can be one big sprint with the right goal. It's just, you know, you need to break it down into smaller pieces and there you go. That's that's the same theory applied on, on roadmap. So it, it, it's a bunch of things. I try to do something, learn from it, get new ideas, try to apply them, learn again and combine. So anyway, we end up working in, in our organization. It's a mix, actually. It's a mix of different things. And that's why maybe I'm so relaxed about saying you cannot say it's one or the other. No, it's you can combine stuff as well. That's not a problem. If you had to distill your philosophy on road mapping down into one or two sentences, what would it be? Well, it's, it is a forward looking collection of things that we will do that will drive uh, value to our goals. And by goals, it cannot be more than three. That would be my two sentences. So Vidas, it's been wonderful having you today. I always like to give people an opportunity towards the end of the session just to pitch themselves and their organization, I guess, how Team Hood can help fire away. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. And for us in Team Hood, and if listeners have been listening towards this point, they might have already learned, we are product-centric. We want to deliver a really valuable, tangible piece of software for those who are trying to work with projects at scale or they want to organize more complicated environments, but they don't want to take complex tools. Complicated doesn't mean complex and vice versa. That's why we create Teamhood, which is like simple, visual and flexible software. It's a lightweight solution and you will find both Kanban, Gantt inside Teamhood because we're not like, you know, opinionated how person should work. We create a toolbox. A person needs to be, you know, comfortable with that toolbox and they will have a choice. That, that's really important. Give people choice. So, so this is our philosophy. This is what we build in product every day. And this is what the whole team follows. Um, yeah, so just check out Teamhood. Um, and uh, I do also have a lot of videos, so it's you don't need to even you know register to try it. Awesome. Well, we'll make sure there's some links down below as well. Great. Well, Vida, it's been awesome having you on the show today. Thanks very much for your time. Likewise, Phil. It was a pleasure. 